Hello, Dr. Ron England, and uh, this video will be on using foreign keys. This is part of a, of a multi-part example. Um, I'm going to look at a specific database here called the Person Database. And what I'll do is I'll start with uh, looking at the table structure of this database so you can see this. And I'll actually make things nice and clear. In this table, uh, in this in this system, uh, system, in these tables that are created in this database, I had this data uh, table called persons. Persons only had one field: it's ID, it's primary key, and it was an identity. Okay. It also has a table called addresses and names. These are one-to-many relationships, allowing an individual identified person with a unique ID to have multiple addresses and multiple names. And this would let us be able to have things like the first name, uh, have uh, the uh, maiden name, a alias, and have multiple places, addresses that are associated with. And it could be work address, home address, multiple home addresses. Okay, so it, the concept here is that you have the person itself is a unique person, but the fields, addresses, and names can have many different entries. So we handled that by creating the persons table and having a foreign key from person ID pointing over to persons and from person ID and names pointing over to persons. So I had these two tables with foreign keys pointing back to the persons table. Now, what I want to do here is I want to demonstrate how you would actually have to use stored procedures specifically to work with tables like this. So what I've done here is I've created a stored procedure called SP insert new person. In this stored procedure, I've got the fields from the tables that I was going that I'm going to work with. Okay, that being the names and the address. So I have an input variables of prefix text, first name text, last name text, suffix text. Okay, that handles the name. Then for the address, I have street number, street, city, state, and zip code. Now, the first thing that I have to do if I'm going to insert a new person into my database is I've got to insert something into the persons table. But when I do that, when I go to insert something into the persons table here, okay, there's only one field and it's an identity. There's actually nothing to insert. There's no values to insert. All I really want to do is create an entry and then get back the, prim the uh, primary key value, which will be, which will be the identity of that uh, the value inserted into that table. So, Statement to do that to insert into the persons when I don't want to actually insert any values is I use insert DBO persons default values. Well, there's only one value, and the default is identity. Now, what can happen is is you can create tables that have default insert values, and whenever you call insert to that table default values, it'll always put the defaults into the table. Now, what I've done next is I've created a variable called at person PK. Okay, and it's an int, and I set that equal to the at at identity. What that will do is it will take the last identity, okay, the last identity inserted into that table, and it will set that value to the variable at person pk. Now the reason is, is because I want to be able to insert that as the foreign key into the next set of tables. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and insert the names. So insert into person to the names table. Okay, all the values, but notice here I've got the foreign key field there, person ID, and I'm going to put that variable at person PK into that value. Prefix text, first name, last name, and suffix, those are all just straightforward. You just put them in as regular. And I'm going to use this, do the same thing over here with the addresses table. Okay, I'm going to put the person ID and make that person PK. Now I've got street number, street, city, state, zip code, and those are the same values that will go in there. So I've created this stored procedure, and I've actually compiled it. It works just fine. It's very straightforward. Okay, the code will be up on the main page, so you can grab the code to look at it. And um, now I'm going to go over here to my stored procedures, and I'm going to take a look at that. I want to run that stored procedure. Okay, so if I go to stored procedures, and I go to execute stored procedures, what it's going to do is give me a little box here where I can put in values that I want to do with this. So let's do this. Let's do doctor. Uh, let's turn the caps lock, doctor, put my name in there, run, Oops. put it in correctly, 
Eaglin. Okay, uh, suffix, I'll leave, I'll leave that one blank because I don't have a suffix, but I could put something there. Uh, street number, I'll put 1155, one of my old addresses, Elm Street, Oviedo, Florida, 32765. Okay, that will create, that will construct, okay, the actual here. Now, I didn't give it that parameter at suffix text. Notice I left that one blank, which was not supplied, which means that it would have a hard time doing this. What I could do here is simply pass it for the suffix text. Because I didn't actually put a default into the stored procedure, which I could have. Um, I'm just going to leave a blank string there. Now I can run this and it actually goes ahead and inserts that. So if I go over here to the persons table and I select, well, I've actually got a few of them there. That's going to be the fourth entry. If I go to the names table, okay, right here, person ID 4, there I am, okay, with no suffix. And if I go to the addresses table, I'm going to see that address that goes with that. Now, the next step is, well, how do you delete? Okay, well, the problem is if, suppose I go and I say, you know what, I want to delete the person. Let's do this first with a query window and see what happens here, because I'm going to show you this doesn't work. So I'm going to go delete from persons, oops, persons where, okay, ID equals four. Okay, that should be a very straightforward delete, right? If I try that, it's not going to, well, I'll see. First, I have to use the right database, so. And I could actually do that right here. I'm just going to set, I'm going to use the quick way. I'm going to use that to the default database. That's now my current one. Now, if I do that, it conflicted with my foreign keys. Okay, because it can't delete the persons because there's two fields pointing at that. So when you're going to delete with this type of relationship, you really do need to create a procedure to do this deletion. And we're going to create SP delete person. Okay, I do need to pass it one thing. I need to pass it the primary key, which will be at, we'll call this person ID. Okay, it's going to be an int. And the first thing that you have to do is you have to delete from the tables that have the keys, the keys pointing to it. So, so you first have to delete from names. Okay. Now we're going to do this where person ID is equal to at person ID. Okay. Then I have to delete. And this is, uh, I'm going to delete from addresses where, I'm going to have the same where clause, because remember I actually named those that way. So if I look over at the tables, addresses has the column person ID, which is the foreign key. I'll look at the names table, okay, person ID. So I'm going to delete those two first. Then I can delete from persons because I've deleted all references to that key and in persons the field is not called person ID it's actually called ID so I'm going to delete from persons there and I'm going to form up my uh, make my my uh, door procedure look nice with the beginning and end that's all I have to do should be able to compile it so now I have that stored procedure if I go over here to my stored procedures and I refresh, I'll get that stored procedure, the delete person, and I want to execute that. Remember that the store that my person ID was four. So if I go like this, I'm gonna put four in there. That's gonna give me this. And now if I call this, it'll execute. Now if I go back up and I look at my tables, 
Okay, if I look at the names, okay, name is gone. Go to my addresses. Name is gone. So what I've done here is I've actually created and deleted with stored procedures, created an insert and a deletion to remove and add new persons into the table and um, using a fairly complex foreign key relationship. That should be very useful for some people that are working with uh, you know, normalized table designs. Hopefully this is very helpful for everybody. Thank you very much.